A new generation of Indigenous neuroscientists and brain surgeons is being promoted by a unique contest in Queensland schools. It's a tough one, but the students find it fun. They have to fill their heads with facts about the brain and blurt them out in the Brain Bee competition. To make the state finals of the Brain Bee competition, you've got to be good. More than 1,500 Year 10 students took the neuroscience test. Only 134 were chosen for the finals. Less than half of those qualified for the individual contest, like these three budding brain experts from Warri Park High School in Cairns. They've already performed at a very, very high level. The involvement of Indigenous students has been made a high priority by the Queensland Brain Institute and Generation One an organisation that aims to equalise opportunities for students who are sometimes disadvantaged by their social environment. We had about 30 Indigenous students participate out of uh, 1,500, so quite a good representation, but we, w we want to do better. You've just got to be brave enough to plant that seed, that dream. And when, and when you've got that dream, that little seed, just keep watering it with belief and, and it can grow into whatever, whatever that dream is. For these students, the brain bee has already been an eye-opener. When my science teacher first introduced the brain bee, I was like pretty excited because it was like a different opportunity that we, we like really learn here and just getting this far has been pretty exciting. It's taken a lot of study to get this far. The students will have to answer questions they normally wouldn't see till medical school. It's taken up my lunch time, so that was pretty hard. <laughs> I mean, no socialising, it was just learning in the library. But their teacher thinks all kids should study some neuroscience. It's um, important that they learn a little bit about why they behave as they do and, and what sort of things will occur if they don't look after their brains. But the brain bee is about more than the brain. It's about creating a pathway for some kids whose parents didn't get through high school. I think it's just saying that, that you, you are no different to the non-Indigenous kids, that you can achieve whatever you dream on an academic level uh, if you just put your, you put your mind to it and believe in yourself. I'm from Cairns, like I grew up in Cairns, but all my family lives in Hopevale, a little Indigenous community outside Cooktown. I was from Manila and we moved here because we thought we might have a better future and better chance here. Their chances of winning the contest may be small, but it's not about winning. It's about getting together with other students like themselves that are also high, high achievers, because I guarantee a lot of those other kids are going to be talking to them about wanting to get great OP scores and, 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 and do wonderful university courses, and I just hope that rubs off on them. On the day of the contest, the students are taken on a tour of the Queensland Brain Institute to get a glimpse of what a future in neuroscience might be like. So this is the motor region here, so um, when I press the, uh, the foot pedal here, you'll see, I hear a click, and then hopefully you'll see that his left hand will move. Educators say it's important to amplify that childlike sense of wonder that's driven many a student through the difficult study of the brain. You wouldn't expect that it would do that many things. It's so complex. So it's like one of those topics that it's still kind of a mystery. And those of us who find it hard to tell our hippocampus from our hypothalamus can agree with that. <laughs> Question 7 of 15. Name the monoamine neurotransmitter found in the RAFE nucleus that is involved in many functions, including temperature regulation, sensory perception and sleep. When the contest came down to the last six, none of the Indigenous students were still in the running. But they were there for a big surprise, an appearance by Professor Elizabeth Blackburn, who won the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine. So the question I got interested in was, was what's at the ends of chromosomes? Professor Blackburn was born in Hobart, one of seven children. Her abiding interest in how cells work took her to Cambridge, then to the University of California, San Francisco. She and two other scientists made a major breakthrough that illuminated how cells age and die, and that brought them the Nobel Prize. But having been a woman in science in the 60s, she knows the meaning of disadvantage. 
So having been there myself, I know that this can be difficult and every kind of encouragement that someone can be given is important. It certainly mattered to me to have people who encouraged me. The Indigenous Brain Bee contestants are already feeling the benefit of that encouragement. One wants to be a social worker, another an historian. They're not stressed that they weren't the top scorers. I did okay. It wasn't my best, but it was fun. And the experience of exploring the big smoke visiting the Queensland Museum has made the hard work all worthwhile. Oh, we went yesterday and it was awesome. It was great. I was like this far away from a mummy, like wrapped up mummy. It was just crazy, really. Oh, I think it's landmark. I think it's, you know, these kids are definitely need to be celebrated as paving the way to become the first neuroscientist as an Aboriginal person. Karen Berkman reporting.